This tutorial will show you how to connect your astrophysics mount to Sequence Generator Pro, including tips to get the most out of your AP mount when doing a fully automated night sky imaging session. Before you get started, this tutorial assumes you will already have completed some things. Your astrophysics mount is physically set up and working properly, including the ability to power up and communicate with your computer. You have a working connection between your mount and your computer. This is typically serial, USB, Ethernet, or Wi-Fi. You have installed the ASCOM platform, the AP ASCOM driver, and optionally the APCC software from Astrophysics. While the AP ASCOM driver is required for use with Sequence Generator, APCC is not required, but we do recommend it. You have already configured your astrophysics driver and software so you can connect to your mount and control it via ASCOM. And you have your site information correctly entered, including date, time, and location. If you are using APCC, you should have already configured your options for horizon limits and meridian limits. You will also need to have downloaded the latest version of Sequence Generator Pro. This tutorial does not cover the details of downloading, installing, or configuring any of the things that we just discussed. So if you need help with these, please look at other videos we have or contact Astrophysics. The software versions used in this tutorial are listed here, and you will need at least this version or later in order to take advantage of this tutorial. If you use APCC, you can use either the standard or the professional version. Prior to starting, you will also need a few additional bits of information for setting up Sequence Generator. You will need your telescope focal length and aperture. This is typically available from your telescope manufacturer's website under specifications. You will also need your imaging telescope's image scale. This can be calculated using any one of a number of field of view calculators online. This is an example of one that we happen to like the link is in the description below. Before launching Sequence Generator, we recommend you already have your mount powered on and connected via ASCOM. This will simplify entering some of the data Sequence Generator needs. For purposes of this demonstration, we are using the ASCOM driver and we're using APCC. Now launch Sequence Generator Pro. Your default windows will look something like this. Here we are using Sequence Generator version 3. Sequence Generator version 4 will look a little bit different, but for our purposes, it's going to act the same way. These are the main windows we are going to be using. First is the Sequencer window. This is where you generally spend most of your time while using the application anyways, but for us, this is where we define the mount connection and settings. The next window we use is the Control Panel. This is where we enter additional settings about our telescope and desired mount behavior. The next window is the user profile manager. This is basically your site information, including location coordinates. It's important these settings match those in your mount, so we are going to get these automatically from the mount later on. There is an equipment profile manager, but we will not be directly using this feature. The Equipment Profile Manager enables you to define your equipment and create new sequences quickly using a predefined equipment list. We find it's easier if you first set up and refine your equipment profile using the Control Panel and Sequence windows, and then save this to an equipment profile for later use. Sequence Generator also has docking modules that are helpful to see details on specific functions or status. We are going to use the Telescope docking module. This will give us insight into where Sequence Generator thinks the telescope is pointing and also when the meridian flip is expected to happen. This is a really useful tool to set up and debug meridian flips. You can dock this as part of the screen, but for now we are going to keep it floating. We are now going to set up our mount connection. Open the sequencer window. Under Telescope, choose the Astrophysics GTO V2 mount. This is the only option for connecting AP mounts, whether you are using an ASCOM driver or the ASCOM driver in conjunction with APCC. If this option is not available, you will need to go back and install the ASCOM driver. Go ahead and click on the connect button to connect your mount. 
Connecting to the mount now enables us to populate the location data in Sequence Generator with the settings in your mount. Now that the mount is connected, we are going to open the User Profile Manager. We are going to enter our, our name and the site name. And instead of typing in site elevation and location coordinates, we are going to import this from the scope. This will ensure that these settings match what is in your AP mount. We are going to then name the profile. and select use this profile as default and then we are going to save it. Now as you can see we choose this user profile in the sequencer window. Next we will set up additional mount details in the control panel. We will show the control panel and we will switch to the telescope tab. Here is where you have various settings and controls for your mount, but in particular we are going to focus on the telescope options and data area. We will start by focusing on the most common settings. You can of course adjust the settings later to suit your needs. First we are going to park when the sequence completes. This means when sequence generator is done imaging for the night, it will park your mount. The specific park location and coordinates is defined within the astrophysics software. Next we are going to leave sync behavior at sync and we will set our mount settling time to a few seconds. Mount settle time is highly dependent on your specific equipment and tolerances so this is just a starting point. You may need to adjust later as you get into more advanced features such as all sky mapping with APPM. We then set our scope focal length and aperture based on the manufacturer's specifications. Next, although this is not specific to astrophysics mounts, we want to set some parameters for successful plate solving. We do this by going to the camera tab and entering the image scale and pixel size of our sensor. And now switching back to the telescope tab and focusing on the telescope options area, we are going to focus on the meridian flip. Enabling the auto meridian flip is an important function for automated imaging. We will focus the remainder of this tutorial on these settings and how to coordinate sequence generator meridian flip settings for a simple meridian flip operation and then cover coordinating more sophisticated meridian flip options available in APCC, including APCC's built-in feature to automatically send meridian limit settings to sequence generator. In this first example, we will set up a simple meridian flip. This will set up an automated meridian flip to occur near the meridian. It's the easiest way to start with automation. Make sure you have already configured sequence generator according to the earlier parts of this tutorial. We are going to enable use auto meridian flip and click the set button. These are the options that we are going to configure for meridian flip. Minutes past the meridian flip is the primary mechanism sequence generator uses to time the command for the meridian flip. It defines how many minutes past the actual meridian it will attempt the flip. We are not going to adjust this yet, but instead see how we can use APCC to set this value automatically. Next we are going to enable wait for meridian. This is the safest option to ensure your exposure times will not accidentally cause the mount to hit the safety limits. If you are using plate solving, and chances are you are if you are looking at automation, enable auto center after meridian flip. These are all the options we need to set up for meridian flip in sequence generator. So go ahead and click the OK button. Next we will switch to APCC. This is where we will enable APCC to control sequence generator to set the meridian flip offset time. We do this by going to the meridian tab and we will enable meridian tracking limits. Next we will enable limit to meridian. For automating meridian flips this is the easiest place to start. Under flip offset padding we will enter 3. This adds a small amount of time to avoid possible timing coordination issues. 
In this example, adding three will instruct sequence generator to start the meridian flip at three minutes west of the actual meridian. Finally, we will enable send limit with offset to SG Pro. If we switch back to sequence generator and check our value, we will see that the minutes past meridian to flip has been updated to three. Just to demonstrate the power of this integration, we can go back to APCC and change the value of the flip offset padding to something else such as six. And when we return to sequence generator and check the value of our minutes past meridian to flip, we can see that that has been updated in sequence generator. So using APCC is the best way to control the meridian flip point in sequence generator and sets you up if you wish to use more advanced flip options in the future. This second example demonstrates how APCC controls sequence generator meridian flip timing when you have customized meridian limits. This starts to show the real power of using APCC to control imaging applications like sequence generator. In this example, APCC will use the same mechanism to coordinate the flip limit with sequence generator, but we need to enable additional options to have this work. We will use the telescope docking module to help us visualize these changes. Now switch back to APCC and view the Meridian tab. We are now going to enable Meridian tracking limits. This tutorial assumes you have already set up your custom tracking limits, so we will not cover that topic here. Make sure your Meridian tracking limits are already created and loaded. Check the Show West limits so that we can visualize the tracking limits. Uncheck Limit to Meridian since we are now doing variable and more sophisticated limit setting. Set the flip offset padding to zero and enable counterweight up slews within both east and west limits and skip the warning dialog box. You will see that west limits is automatically selected when you choose east limits. Now APCC sets sequence generator's flip point based on the declination of the mount. To help us visualize how this works, we will use the 3D viewer in APCC. If your mount is parked, double click parked in the lower status bar to start sidereal tracking. For this demonstration, we are going to use the move scope buttons in APCC to slew the scope to an example target declination. You can see the pointing position change in the Meridian Tracking Limits window and in the 3D view. Here we can see that the target declination is relatively close to having the camera or the back of the telescope hit the pier so that the limit is relatively close to the Meridian. The flip offset value is now 12 minutes past the Meridian and being sent to Sequence Generator and in fact, when we switch to sequence generator and look at the value, we can see that it is also set to 12 minutes here. Confirming APCC is sending these values and setting them in sequence generator. Now we will slew the telescope to a different declination and evaluate the results. Here we can see that the meridian tracking limit is greatly extended because the camera end of the telescope is angled away from the pier. The telescope can therefore track farther past the meridian without risk of pier collision. Now looking at the meridian tracking limits, we see that it is 227 minutes to the meridian flip. And in fact, going back to sequence generator, we can see that this value has also been changed to reflect this. As a final demonstration, we vary the declination of the mount and watch the corresponding meridian tracking limit change. APCC automatically updates the limit offset and then is sent to sequence generator. You have seen the powerful automation that is possible using Astrophysics APCC to coordinate and control sequence generators meridian flip feature. 
This example is one of the many reasons astrophysics recommends using APCC for all applicable astrophysics mounts. However, you can still use your astrophysics mount with Sequence Generator Pro using only the AP ASCOM version 2 driver. All of the features demonstrated in this tutorial that are not specific to APCC still apply when using the ASCOM driver. The mount connection setup and import location coordinates all work the same way. In addition, the telescope tab settings are also configured the same way. The main difference in using only the ASCOM driver is you will need to set up and manage your sequence generator flip offset manually. This is easy to do and usually a flip offset of a few minutes will ensure sequence generator performs the meridian flip successfully. Since custom meridian tracking limits are a feature of APCC, this is not available when using only the ASCOM driver. This completes this tutorial on setting up your astrophysics mounts for use with Sequence Generator Pro, including options for configuring a simple automated meridian flip or a more sophisticated meridian flip based on custom meridian tracking limits. We hope you found this video helpful and let us know in the comments below. Please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel to get more out of your astrophysics mount.